Hi, I am Dr. Sakib Mansoor, and today I will discuss with you ruptured extensor pollicis longus deformity of thumb, right? So, ten tendon lesions and finger deformities, I have started a series of the lectures. Previously uploaded was the dropped finger. Today, I will discuss this one, the ruptured extensor pollicis longus. Next to come, these are three, the mallet and the butternair deformity and the sawn neck deformity. So what is a ruptured extensor pollicis longus? It can get ruptured after fraying or ischemia where it crosses the wrist. It is often disabling because extensor pollicis longus is used in nearly all manual actions. So let's study its anatomy first. Extensor pollicis longus takes origin from posterior surface of the middle third of the ulna and the introsious membrane just distal to the abductor pollicis longus. Hence, it extends higher into forearm than the extensor pollicis brevis. It extends more distally similarly into the thumb being inserted into the dorsal aspect of the base of the distal phalanx of the thumb. Its long tendon changes its direction as it gets hooked around the dorsal tubercle of the radius, the Lister's tubercle, and forms ulnar boundary of the anatomical snuff box. There exists no extensor expansion on thumb. The tendon of the extensor pollicis longus is stabilized on dorsum of the thumb by receiving expansions from abductor pollicis brevis and the adductor pollicis. So its innervation is the posterior introsious nerve, its continuation of the radial nerve, the root, nerve roots are the C7 and C8, and its action is, of, of course, it's an extensor. It extends terminal phalanx of the thumb and draws the thumb back from opposed position. It helps in extension and abduction of the wrist. You could see this. This is the extensor pollicis longus tendon. Here it is going in like this. Here it goes, right? And this is the extensor indices just to show you. And uh, let me now enlarge it for you. It's just a while. And the, you get the zoomed picture, right? Here you could see this is the extensor pollicis longus ten tendon, right? And this is extensor indices. And this is the Lister's tubercle, right? where it gets hooked around the tendon, long tendon of the extensor pollicis longus. A testing of the muscle. To test the extensor pollicis longus, thumb is extended against resistance at interphalangeal joint. If the extensor pollicis longus tendon is normal, tendon of the muscle will be seen and palpated on medial aspect of the anatomical snuff box. What are the causes of the ruptured extensor pollicis longus? A few cases, few causes of the ruptured uh, extensor pollicis longus tendon consist of, first of all, the fractures. The Coley's fracture, the fracture of the distal radius can result in a rupture of extensor pollicis longus tendon. Rheumatoid arthritis involving wrist can result in a rupture of the EPL tendon. Repetitive motion the excessive abnormal or repetitive motion of the wrist can result in cause of a rupture of extensor pollicis longus tendon. This may be due to occupations requiring repeated flexion and extension of wrist. Steroids. Use of steroids with either uh, local or systemic may result in a rupture of this tendon EPL. So look like picture, right? of the deformity here you could see this this is the thumb and it has dropped and in into the phase of flexion cannot be extended actively distal phalanx gets dropped into flexion it can be extended passively and there can still be weak active extension possible due to the insertion of tenor muscle into extensor expansion though the thumb cannot be elevated actively backwards above the plane of the hand that is called retroposition as mentioned previously this is the enlarged picture already. This is the dropped thumb into the state of flexion. So the last um, few words about the treatment. Surgery is needed to repair a ruptured extensor pollicis longus tendon. The best treatment choice is to transfer extensor indices tendon to EPL tendon. Right? 
After surgery, it takes minimum period of six weeks for the tendon to heal and as a minimum 12 weeks before one can return to unlimited activities. The results are satisfactory in over 90% of the cases. So thank you very much um, for watching my video and uh, stay tuned for the next um, video of the finger deformity. Thank you very much. Bye.